Infinity, project headquartered in Zug, um, and president and CTO of String Labs in Palo Alto. It's a studio, incubator, and an investor focused on advanced open protocol projects. His recent technical works include Definity technologies, such as the Threshold Relay, probabilistic slot protocols, blockchain's consensus mechanisms, and blockchain nervous system, and, and the Phi, Phi uh, Crypto Fiat Autonomous Loan Issuance System. Please welcome Dominique Wil Williams. PDF. Sweet, me. And is there a presentation mode? Probably. Just, yeah, try this play full screen. screen. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Sweet. Thanks. Here's my um, Yeah, cool. Hi. Um, so, uh, uh, I'm uh, here to introduce Definity. Uh, who's heard of Definity before? Actually, quite a few then. Okay, um, Definity is a, a new blockchain computer network uh, project. Um, it's been around for a while. Um, it's actually not too well known. Um, it's conceived as a sister network to Ethereum, uh, but the um, maths and protocols actually predate uh, Ethereum. Um, the kind of vision is uh, this thing we call the intelligent decentralized cloud. Uh, the decentralized cloud is a blockchain computer that scales and can support very large numbers of business applications. And the, the word intelligent is inserted because it has an algorithmic governance system called the blockchain nervous system, which makes it very, very different to a traditional the code is law system because um, everything on the platform is subject to this algorithmic governance system. So uh, let's just try and... Um, Look at Definity and its uh, in the sort of general evolution of the um, uh, systems we see today. Is that clear on the screen? Uh, okay. Yeah. So uh, you know, Generation One was was Bitcoin. It was described in two thousand and eight and launched in two thousand and nine. And the um, we've all, we obviously had decentralized networks for a long time, right? Um, starting with things like um, you know even Napster, although that had a central index, and ending up with uh, BitTorrent. Um, but Bitcoin was a fundamentally different kind of decentralized network. It's um, something called a stateful decentralized network. And what that means is that the network uh, remembers some kind of shared state. And you know, everyone can collaborate, collaboratively update this state. And uh, it's produced really as a side effect of the protocol being executed. And, uh, the protocol works in such a way that you can't break this state. It's kind of indestructible. So um, generation one, the world's first stateful decentralized network, which was Bitcoin, um, produced a virtual ledger, right? Now, a virtual ledger is a pretty simple thing. You have um, you know, different addresses, and at those different addresses, you have balances of Bitcoin. And each address is protected by uh, an access control script. And if you can unlock the access control script, you can move the Bitcoins at that address to another address. Right? And that's basically what Bitcoin is. Right? Um, very simple thing, and the underlying protocols are very simple, but it was a huge advance because now you could have this shared virtual state. Um, generation two was, was Ethereum, and Ethereum was uh, kind of came out of some uh, ideas that were going in the direction of a blockchain computer, things like MasterCoin and so on. But, but Ethereum was the first uh, project to properly define um, what this would be. And uh, instead of producing a virtual ledger, Ethereum produced a virtual blockchain computer. And a blockchain computer, of course, is far more powerful than a simple ledger. And uh, you can upload and you can install, right? Upload and install smart contract software to this blockchain computer. Um, and you can now create arbitrary systems, right? Because once you have the ability to run software on a computer, you can make it do anything, really, right? So this was a huge advance. Um, Bitcoin used proof of work, single proof of work. Uh, Ethereum used this thing called Ghost, which was a uh, kind of evolution of the original proof of work idea. So Definity um, is also uh, a blockchain, virtual blockchain computer. But it has some differences. Um, the first one is uh, that 
um, in contrast to uh, traditional systems without governance, it has this algorithmic governance system, right, that can uh, pretty much do anything within the network. Um, and the virtual blockchain computer is more performant, okay? So um, we'll touch on how, how much more performance soon. And uh, it can also scale out, which means that as new miners join, it, it increases its capacity. So what might be generation four? Um, I suggest well, something that uh, company String Labs is working on at the moment. It's called Phi, which is like a crypto fiat, which is meant to provide an alternative to cryptocurrencies, which are very difficult to use in decentralized finance because they're too volatile. And crypto fiat uh, is produced in a similar way to normal fiat currencies uh, when loans are issued, right? So, you know, traditional money is created when commercial banks issue loans. Like 98% of the money in the economy is produced that way. So um, the idea is that, you know, once we not only have, uh, you know, a performant and scalable um, blockchain computer, once we can add into that um, crypto fiat, um, all kinds of other interesting things that become possible. And, and what Generation 5 is, I've, I've got no idea. So um, just we'll whiz through and then uh, get to some of the reasons I think the decentralized cloud is important to business. So just you know, recapping, you know, one of the um, objectives is to create a performant blockchain computer. So uh, the new protocols we have in a, will produce sort of finality in about five seconds on a public network, which is sort of 50x speed up from today. Like you know, Ethereum blocks are like 14 to 20 seconds, something like that. But um, you need like several of them, you know, 37, I think, with the cal recent calculation, about 10 minutes to produce an absolutely final transaction. Whereas um, this can do it in, in much less time, about five seconds. Um, <clears throat> critically, it, it, the architecture used um, is designed to make it possible to scale out the network, right? That means as new miners join the network, the capacity of the network, both in relation to computation and in relation to storage, increases, right, to any level required. Uh, and then we've got this thing, the AI is law. So currently we have the code is law. Um, where you uh, can do what you like on you know, Ethereum and no one can stop you, um, subject to your, your being able to pay for the um, contracts you install and run. Um, but in this new system, there's an algorithmic governance system, and actually every single thing in the network is subject to this governance system. It, and this governance system can uh, upgrade the protocol. You know, it can freeze contracts. It can change economic parameters. Um, and we'll touch on that a bit more in a moment. So uh, research on the Definity project began January 2015. We'll, we'll look at the history in a second. But there's two kind of poles of um, applications that were envisaged. On one pole, uh, we want to create sort of um, open source businesses that kind of disintermediate uh, traditional tech monopolies. You know, for example, Uber and eBay, and uh, also potentially things like social media. And one of the original um, design objectives was to discover how you could run a search engine on a, a blockchain computer. And it, it, it turns out it's not a, such a crazy idea. There are various things you can, you can do. So that's one poll, right? Just recreating a lot of these monopolistic uh, technology inter intermediaries in open source form, um, which we think will be much better. If you look at a business like eBay, you know, it's got actually tens of thousands of software engineers. But, but if you haven't noticed, the website has sort of stayed the same for the last sort of, 20 years, right? So something's very wrong, you know. And, and do we do we really need this big monopolistic company, um, you know, just taking this cut from every um, sale for all eternity, just because it, you know, launched in 1996? And I, I would say that it's much better if the, you know, the fabric of the internet performs this role itself. And uh, that's one end. The other end uh, is just corporate um, IT and engineering and. We think that blockchain computer can you know, massively reduce the cost uh, of enterprise IT systems. And of course, blockchain computers are much more expensive to run than Amazon Web Services. So we'll come to why you know, that, that's possible. So just quickly, Project Timeline, it kind of came out of uh, this thing called the Pebble Project, which was focused on cryptocurrencies in, in 2014. Um, kicked off in uh, January 2015. Um, and, uh, it was incubated by a company called String Labs, which helped it create this foundation in Switzerland. A lot of people are following this route. Um, ran a small seed. It's got like two fundraising in two phases. Had a seed fundraising uh, in February. Um, it's got about $10 million now for R&D, which is trying to um, 
spend building out the, uh, its R&D operations as fast as possible. It's aiming, I don't think it'll happen in July, but it probably, may, hopefully August, you know, it's aiming to release a test network and, and, and uh, show various things, you know, show the, show the uh, core technologies working uh, in network form, um, sh sh you know, demonstrate organizational build out. It's a very different kind of team to what people are used to in crypto. Um, it's heavily dominated by computer science professors and PhDs and so on, pulling people out of Google and other companies. Uh, so it's a very technology-focused operation, and uh, it also has um, parallel kind of business development tracks that people um, can't see at the moment. Uh, Definit is uh, uh, partnered with BCG, so we're assisting them in various kind of uh, uh, commercial projects. And um, you know, once we can demonstrate these three things, um, and we're happy, with the uh, trigger will be, will be pulled on the main fundraising round, and probably raise about 20 million Swiss francs. The interesting thing with the fundraising, uh, definitive fundraising, is it all runs on Ethereum smart contracts. And so actually the entire system's autonomous, and all we can actually do is delay the, fun, the main fundraising round. Um, I won't go into it, but that's it. If, if you're into kind of uh, crowdfunding methodologies, it's interesting in its own right. So quickly, uh, how does this relate to Ethereum? Well, currently, um, you know, Ethereum looks something like this. You know, you've got decentralized applications, okay? Which, are the, which is the green bar, and, and they sit on this thing called the EVM, the Ethereum Virtual Machine, which is an open standard, right? And then that sits on top of the Ethereum network, and the Ethereum network has, you know, the code is law, the management of the network is by the community, it just runs, you know, the, the protocol um, runs everything unless something very extraordinary happens when the community can step in, or maybe there's a, an agreed protocol upgrade. Um, and there's a system called Casper under development, which will increase the performance of the Ethereum network, but it favors uh, extreme availability. So we're going to sort of broaden it out with this sister network, and um, Definity um, <laughs> differs. You know, instead of the code is law, we've got the AI is law. Instead of Casper, we've got this thing, Crypto3, which is, um, has a bunch of new cryptography and math, and it, we emphasize performance and, and infinite scale. So, you know, I think the important thing here is, you know, dry, you know, extend, don't imitate, and there are very fundamental differences between these two networks. You know, the, the code is law is preferable for many applications, and extreme availability is um, preferable for um, sp specific kinds of fiduciary application. Um, so, you know, uh, aim to share technology, you know, we're working on major upgrades to, I won't bore you with it, but, you know, uh, aspects of P2P networking and things like that, components we hope to push into Ethereum. We're hoping a lot of the Crypto3 techniques that we're developing can be reused within Ethereum. So we don't see it as competitive. It's a different thing. Um, one thing we do believe, though, is that common standards will win out, and that's very much our objective. Um, we think in the end that businesses won't want to build upon you know, all these proprietary chains that are appearing um, and end up locked in to... Um, proprietary systems. And, you know, it's very risky to use these proprietary systems. People don't see the, the danger. I mean, I think IBM, uh, last count, had that sort of 400, pro, you know, pox in the wild. And, you, for example, you know, you might think, oh, well, you know, no, no made a mistake by choosing IBM, but um, just imagine this, you know, the Hyperledger system, if, if it can be called a blockchain, which I don't think it can, cannot be run in, in, in a public network. It's just not designed to run in a public setting. Completely impossible. And therefore, if you build on IBM, you're basically deciding that you're only ever going to run a private chain managed by IBM. You're never, ever going to run in a public setting. And that's a very um, dangerous thing to commit to. So, you know, we'd, we'd certainly push uh, open standards. So the decentralization vision, um, you know, uh, we're much more obsessed about uh, properly decentralizing the network. Um, you know, you'd be surprised how many existing uh, decentralized networks aren't really that decentralized, and it's mainly due to deficiencies in the design of the underlying protocols. Um, so, you know, the Definity vision is very much to make sure that the you know, client computers that are participating um, don't just exist in one miner's pool. Um, and these pictures are, in fact, um, of con consumer Definity mining devices that um, are being developed by String Labs. So the idea is that, you know, um, they actually do more than just mining, but, 
we, we want to see, you know, big, you know, they'll never be as profitable as a dedicated mining operation, but the, the difference isn't so great, right? Whereas at the moment, um, if you want to participate in mining Ethereum or Bitcoin, forget it. The only way you can do that is if you've, you know, got your own Communist Party subsidized power station in China or, you know, like Genesis Mining, like, you know, geothermal, some kind of special arrangement in Iceland or whatever it is, and, you know, you could buy your hardware in bulk or have access to the best special ASIC chips or something like that. Um, Definity works in a very different way. And, um, you know, the, this gap, the, the gap between uh, uh, an amateur miner and a professional miner is much smaller. Um, so, you know, this is one of the aims. We just covered this, you know, uh, decentralized tech intermediaries. Uh, and, you know, we're looking right across the board. I mean, sharing's an obvious one. Like, you know, why do you need an Uber? And, uh, you know, you, I think you're going to see a lot of, I'm um, just in the same way people in energy are looking at, you know, creating decentralized markets. They don't want to have a new intermediary. You're going to see things like, you know, car manufacturers wanting to see decentralized markets um, for uh, their vehicles rather than um, doing it through Uber. Um, but, you know, there's many dimensions to this. And uh, you know, we'd like to see, you know, uh, messaging done in the blockchain computer, right? So you might have a smart contract, effect effectively just an object that holds your email messages. And when somebody sends you a message, it's to your, encrypted to your public key, effectively. And, and so it's the only person that can read it is you, right? You have complete control of your data, and there's uh, no privacy risks. Um, search is something we want to do, and so on. And you notice even storage is there, because we believe that the blockchain computer should have in infinite capacity. It shouldn't be lots of different systems. When you try and combine lots of different systems, it makes things very complicated. Um, we're also interested in uh, decentralizing sort of fundamental services. Uh, one of the, um, there's only two really uh, big projects I'm involved with. Um, the, the other is a thing called FI, uh, uh, decentralized commercial banking. And um, that's another you know, interesting project in its own right. It's probably about two years out of production though, which is, you know, uh, a ways off for, for a bunch of reasons, but um, it's important not only because banks are very inefficient and it's going to be possible to, to issue loans much more judiciously um, than banks can, um, with, and, and then bring down you know the f for the, the you know the, the fees and the interest rates. But in the process of originating these loans autonomously, um, we'll be able to create crypto fiat, which is this uh, stable. Um, Stable is not even the right word. It kind of piggy will, will piggyback, you know, the um, various fiat systems, um, which will enable a whole lot of uh, interesting things in decentralized finance. Um, so finally, I'll just uh, talk about the enterprise IT vision. Um, so I think this is one of the most misunderstood um, pieces of the whole blockchain computer thing. And I did see someone. Um, Mention, I think it was Block Apps was beginning to talk about something uh, similar to this yesterday. Um, you know, the cost of running computations on the Definity um, blockchain computer will be hundreds of times, hopefully not hundreds, but you know, many, to, much, much greater, right, than running a computation on Amazon Web Services, right? So then, why do we imagine? that we can you know, dramatically reduce enterprise IT costs across the board. And the answer is pretty simple, which is that, you know, of course, if you look at the uh, cost of running an enterprise IT system, you know, the cost of computation is a tiny, tiny piece of that. It's human capital that's expensive, right? Human capital is where the money goes, not on running the CPU. Um, the cost of running the CPU is almost an irrelevance. So, um, you know, if you can reduce the amount of human capital involved in enterprise IT, even though the cost of running the computations will increase dramatically, you can save an enormous amount of money. And um, so this is why, you know, we're very interested in um, going after um, uh, enterprise IT. And if, if you want a way of thinking about this, um, the best way of explaining it is that, you know, uh, these blockchain computer systems abstract away distribution and components and things like that, right? So if you look at the very latest development systems, um, you know, that you use to create decentralized applications on blockchain computer, you'll see that there's no real, um, you're, not, you're not really dealing with distribution. So, you know, you can imagine a smart contract's an object, you can have some project, and 
these things are wrapped by the by the development system, and you, you know, in, you're creating your interface, right? Your user interface, and in that user interface, you're just talking directly to the contracts. There's no notion of distribution. There's no database connection pool or remote database, and similarly, there's no backup and restore and security and things like that. And if you want another way of looking at it, um, you know, imagine um, it's very difficult to see all of this because we're down here, you know, right amongst it all, all these companies, and there's all these standard practices, so we find it completely normal, but if you could like zoom up to the moon, right, and you could look down from the moon and Earth, you would see, take a distanced view of the, of the Earth, you would see all of these millions of companies. And then you'd realize that a lot of them are doing the same thing, right? They have, um, you know, medium com medium sized company up, you know, you have some databases, you have the database administrators, right, and you know, probably a couple of them in case one gets sick, and they're configuring the databases and doing backups, and then there's some kind of Amazon Web Services whiz who's configuring all those components, and the database guy is exporting his database once a day, and then the Amazon Web Services guy is running a script to copy it onto S3, and then you know, maybe if they've got a network, um, there's some kind of security guy who's um, you know, protecting that by configuring his firewall. And there's so much repetition, people even develop the same personalities, right? So you, know, you might find in a sort of medium-sized company up, there'll be a corridor, end of the corridor will be some guy in a room, maybe he'll have an you know, ACDC t-shirt on and a ponytail, right? And uh, he's like protecting the network and he's got a firewall and you know, he's getting really pissed off with this uh, a repetitive job, and so he's making it really restrictive, and people are coming in and saying, look, I just need to be productive, and I want to have Slack, and he's saying, no, you can't have Slack, I'm blocking that port, because, <laughs> right, right, <laughs> so the thing is, it's really bad, I mean, this is, and the whole point about technology is to remove this repetitive mindless, um, and, and I think, you know, there's a whole new conversation, but uh, what you'll see is that, you know, with these blockchain computers, the decentralized cloud, you don't have to think about, you know, you've got persistent objects, you don't have a database, right? Bye-bye database. You're going to have, uh, you know, built-in redundancy, right? It doesn't go wrong. It's unstoppable. You don't have to have disaster, disaster contingency planning and backup and restore. All of this just goes away. The complexity, the Rube Goldberg machine, doesn't exist anymore. It's just a much more simple thing. There's no notion of of distribution and components. It's just objects that you program an interface against. So finally, I mean, this is the, uh, you know, thing you've probably heard from lots of people, but i just repeat it just quickly. I'm running out of time, right? Okay. Um, you know, this is the last slide. So, you know, how you might reimagine re re enterprise IT, and uh, it, it's not just about saving costs either. You can actually make enterprise IT systems better. You can reimagine them. Um, and there are a bunch of properties that blockchain computers provide that make um, this reimagination possible. So, um, you know, one of them's autonomy. You can create systems that don't have intermediaries, and you can see in a consortium that might be a very attractive thing. If you create like an open, an open source consortium system with its own governance mechanisms, so you no longer have to kind of appoint some company to be an intermediary for your industry. Um, these things are unstoppable. Remember, the blockchain computer is a computer that doesn't exist, right? So you can't, uh, it can't fail. There are no servers to fail, so the the, the blockchain computer is unstoppable, right? There's, you can't log into the computer and tamper with it. Um, it's verifiable. You can verify the code you execute. Uh, it's, here's an interesting one um, for, from a business uh, perspective. The blockchain computer isn't a physical thing. It's a virtual thing that's created as a manifestation of the protocol that's running. And what this means is the blockchain computer exists in cyberspace only. All right? The blockchain computer is a thing of cyberspace. And this is very, very important because we're moving to a more global, globalized world. And it means you can take business logic and you can put it in cyberspace, right? And for example, you could have a financial exchange that exists in for cyberspace. It's not directly regulated. It's not tied to any jurisdiction, any regulated jurisdiction. Now, each individual interacting with the exchange, of course, is regulated. They're a physical person that's resident in some country, right? But you can put the business logic that belongs, that, that ties different people and businesses together. You can put it in cyberspace. Tamper-proof, obviously, there's no service to meddle with. Shareable, much easier to create um, shared systems. Same with interoperability. And, and finally, um, it's, it's kind of simple. Distribution is abstracted away, and that comes back to the, to the costs. And so I guess that's it. I'm out of time. Thanks.